Did you stop the offer for I've never stopped there, but I can't have a friend of mine who lives in the race. He's like, oh, crazy. Right next to the milk. You know, it's the other. That would be torture. For some reason, we always end up having to stop at that place. Yeah. It's always like, oh, man. This works out every time. Okay, six o'clock, call the meeting to order. We'll get things rolling here. Uh, first item would be the minutes from our last couple meetings. One on August 1st and the other on August 19th. If there's no discussion, I would make a motion to approve the minutes from August 1st and 2024 and August 19th, 2024 planning board meeting. I'll second that. <clears throat> A motion and second to approve the minutes. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, and now the fun type of discussion we'll have tonight is discussing first the parking ordinance, which starts on page 10. So if you recall, we recently had a um, parking variance um, and then before that, we had a parking variance, which is the first two variances for parking I've had since I've been here. Um, so ironically, um, planning board members expressed maybe we should look into it as well as council board members. So that is why the parking ordinance is in front of you today. Um, couple Jennifer, what was the first one? I knew the second one, the brewery. What's the first one you were referencing? Um, tractor supply. Oh, thank you. So if you recall, that parking lot was, was, was much bigger, almost double the size, but they had that outdoor storage area, both on the south end of the building and also the east side of the building. Um, so. so parking, you know, is typically put in place so that um, businesses have to allow some space for patrons of their business to uh, be able to park off the street as well as provide handicapped parking. Um, I think about a couple places in town, if we didn't have a parking ordinance, we might run into trouble. One of them is simply the school. Um, if we did not have a parking ordinance, um, there are on occasions still today where we have tournaments there that they are parked and they are parked in the clotted condition. When that, that old road, um, John Janata Road used to be open, they'd be parked all over the clotted condition. Um, they park in the middle school. Um, they park. I know we've had people park on, on, on business 23. Um, so just you know, keep in mind. Um, I'm not for or against a parking ordinance if we decide to take it entirely out, which I know some people want that. It's just one less thing I have to enforce. <laughs> so he's not. But, he's not here tonight. <laughs> but there is some things that we should consider when we're you know um, taking it out. Um, the other thing you think about um, the Fortitude Senior Living Facility is in negotiations on trying to obtain some more parking. Their parking does meet the ordinance, however, they do not have enough parking. So, if we wouldn't have had that ordinance in place, they probably wouldn't even have less. They have underground parking plus outdoor parking. So, as we look at you know the future of Painesville, um, additions for Painesville, you know. Businesses changing hands, like the dental office, for instance. Um, just keep in mind what we want that to look like. It's unfortunate that you know um, maybe this is an area where we could change it. Is you know instead of girls' floor area, it could be the area where patrons, you know, like a restaurant where they actually seat instead of the kitchen area or the restrooms or maybe the storage room. The mechanical room, um, but, but don't, don't they typically go by seating area in, in those well, situations? in the in the brewery, it's girls' floor area. It is. It is. Um, you know, according to the fire marshal for the brewery, they can seat two hundred. They have a seating capacity of two hundred and fifty-one. That's insane. You know, but that's you know the entire area where people can be. So that might be a place where we could change some numbers. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to you guys to have a discussion. I just thought I would give you a little bit of introduction or background. I guess I'm going to throw it right back to you, Jennifer. Sorry. Historically, where have you seen this not function well? Where, where, you, know, you just mentioned uh, schools. 
So, in, 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 in response to that, I wonder, you know, if you're going to have a tournament once or twice a year, is it valid to have that type of parking sitting there for 362 days a year? Uh, but, but in other, do you see this not functioning well in other specifics? Well, you know, if you think about um, our churches, you know, most of our churches on a large event, now they happen more than one or two. You know, you have all the holidays, you have large funerals, large weddings. They're on Maple Street or Main Street, the Catholic Church. Um, they also, the Catholic Church has two parking lots. Um, you know, I'm, I don't, like I said, I'm not the parking police. I don't drive around everywhere. Oh, you but at, you, you see it more than anyone. Yeah, That's what I'm asking. At, you know, the former um, Washburn Court for the assisted living. Yeah. Not everybody fit in that parking lot. Yeah. You know, that was built way before our time, but that probably did not have enough parking. You know, because that was including residents that still had a car. Mm -hmm. And the visitors, most of them parked on Washburn. Um, a prime example is Central Care. They do not have enough parking. The drugstore? No, the hospital. Oh, okay. They're parking on every residential street there is. Um, that is. And, and did they, were they grandfathered in so they didn't have to meet this? And that was maybe for my time. But, yeah. but now when they did the expansion, wouldn't that have made this take effect? Well, they, they, they gave us more parking, but there's still so much, you know, there's still so many uh, people they just don't have. Okay. The other thing is, too, is when you think about it as a business owner, which you know some of you are, you know parking lots are are overhead. They're a money pit. One hundred percent. You know it costs money to pay them and grade them and you know to keep them up and, and line them. You know a lot of our industrial park people have gravel parking lots and they maintain them very well. Um, when you think about um, parking lots in our shoreland area, they're considered impervious surface, so they're going to be included in that 30% or that 25% that DNR imposes. So, you know, there's both ways of, you know, the pendulum you can think about. Um, I don't know if getting rid of it or keeping it with some changes is better, um, but that's up to this board to decide. Thank you for your... So when the Washburn Court was built, it was actually built in the place of the Pylon Hospital back in 1960. And you got to remember in context, 1960, same thing with the hospital in town, that families back then usually only had one car. So the, the need for um, more vehicles probably wasn't as much as so as, as, as it is today. One of the things that uh, I want to bring up is that when it comes to private businesses, something to think about is letting the competition decide how much um, parking space is needed. Say, for instance, like the brewery, if we would have just left it at, let them figure out how much parking they need, they'll figure it out in the long run. Instead of uh, putting a lot of these uh, ordinances in place, that's just for businesses. As far as the schools uh, and street parking, I would leave alone. But, um, you know, like with the schools, sure they got that big parking spot, but there's also middle school parking. And with the ball field, yeah, they got a one clock, I understand that part. But one, um, for, for versus, I have rarely seen the parking lot at Teal's half full. It's like they have more than than what they need. So I guess um, my suggestion is let the businesses figure out what they need, kind of like the dental office didn't tell them, and then uh, um, keep it a lot more simple than what it, uh, than more complicated than what it needs. So that's just my thought. Anyone else jump in? Simple is good. Yeah, I guess I took the time and reviewed most of the ordinances from the area communities that we got from Kimball, Albany, and Sox Center. And um, Sox Center being, you know, the basic one is one page. <laughs> uh, pretty simple and straightforward that way. The rest of them are kind of more detailed. And then just also I reviewed the recent variances that we approved from Tractor Supply and also Cronus Brewing um, and seeing how what closest what they were allowed, uh, what closest one would be to that so um, it was good to just cross-reference see compare those um, but I would suggest that we want to be more of an opening welcoming type of business pro business community and that some of those options could potentially be updated from where they are but still have an ordinance you know available to go to refer back to and then discuss the variance if, if, if it's needed so what are the um Businesses that I've noticed that have done well with that 
would be uh, the Legion in town on Monday nights. It appears that their parking lot is pretty full, but there's still some empty spaces. Same thing on occasions where they have Saturday or Sunday morning breakfasts. The parking lots are full, but they seem to manage with it also. I, I also I just made some brief notes in here, and this is still on, I just want to make sure I'm still in Painesville, so that I don't get into some other, this is, okay, so this is in, uh, in Kimball. You know, there are some spots where they do, uh, for chapels, they do um, spaces per chapel instead of, it appears, unless I'm misunderstanding it, uh, I'm on page 17, uh, spaces per seating. So is, is ours, when we talk about uh, funeral homes and things, is ours based on seating capacity or just per chapel? Because that seemed kind of vague. Page 12. Where are you at, son? Uh, <laughs> Funeral homes, at least 30 parking spaces for each chapel. Yeah, see, plus one parking space for each funeral. See, that seems odd to me that to, to cause you can have a chapel that's, you know, 30 feet by 30 feet or, you know, 3,000 feet by 3,000 feet. That seemed kind of odd anyway, to not have a, that tied in with a seating capacity. And that is ours. That is, yes, we're on Painesville, so okay. Seating. So that was one thing that I noted that I'd kind of like to see change. And since I'm speaking I, and, and I'm also owner of a manufacturing facility, I, I saw on, on item 18, page 12, um, manufacturing, fabrication, and processing of product, da, 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 eight spaces plus one space for each two employees on shift. I question the that only because I think about that I don't have that I'm I don't have that many spaces and um, our spaces tend to double as assembly areas and, and product storage areas too so um, I just think about if you're only doing wholesale if you're not doing any retail sales where you have someone come into your facility to buy something I'm not so sure that that's that you'd need eight spaces um, plus one for every employee. We would have plenty if, if we didn't use it as assembly area and you know staging areas. <clears throat> the other thing I just made note of, and, and these I'm possibly were grandfathered in or just not. Sometimes you don't kick the sleeping dog, but on page 11, item D, off-street parking facilities for dwellings shall be provided and located on the same lot or parcel of land as the building they are intended to serve. Now, a perfect example of that not being utilized or, or not in effect is the plaza, which has a has a the, 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 the main dwelling and then owns a lot directly behind my building uh, for their parking. And it seems order. to work pretty well. It does. The, the parking ordinance doesn't apply to C1, though. Oh. The plaza is, is C1, right? Oh. I mean, that, that's the reason. That, because we don't require parking for the businesses that are in the C1 district downtown. Even, if, even for dwelling. I'm surprised by that. The other thing you got to realize is that morphed from a an hotel and yeah. that kind of just changed okay. over time. Yep. And whoever was doing this then, I mean, they just never enforced it. But yeah, okay. they would be in C1. So, so in C1, it is just essentially not street, street parkable. There, I mean, C1, I think the, the, the theory is that it's mostly street parking. Some businesses have one or two or three spots. Like mine. Uh, but like the library or, or Bill Spooner's office. Yeah. They have one in the back. Yep. But a lot of them don't have much. I mean, yeah. like, you know, the cafes, I yeah. mean, they maybe have one or two that they park you know mm -hmm. okay but what like washburn court because uh, they definitely don't have enough parking if you're going to look at number two here boarding room halfway house transient housing yeah. so do they not meet the qualification or is that because also they're they're not c1 though are they does c1 go that side of 23 i don't think so it, uh, well it does just um, the corner probably the corner yeah. is c1 um both corners probably yeah so as residential they won't meet it yeah, they won't. I mean, it, it, but if you don't, 
if you don't change the use, yeah. I mean, it's and that becomes, grandfathered in. I mean, it's, it's it becomes kind of a gray area. area there, too. I mean, even like when I bought the church over on, on Hudson and Wendell, you know, you know, it's like, well, what constitutes continuous use? You know, essentially, it actually wasn't a church for over a year. So does that make it? You know, it's a, it's, it becomes challenging to enforce and define that. You know. So that was an assisted living for some time, and it's still considered assisted living, only assisting those through the more well, boarded, halfway. Yeah, like a rehab center. So they're 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 still falling under the assisted living. Mm -hmm. What what I'm I'm curious now to know what zone that is. I, I don't even give me one sec. Yeah. I thought it was you didn't have this memorized, Jennifer. I'm... You know, I've learned not to speak out of turn. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, but I'm not sure. So it is actually R two. Okay, R two. Residential. Okay. Across the street, you know, you have our, those are zoned commercial. Um, Christensen's is zone commercial. Who? Right across the street here? Yeah, that's an odd oddity. You know, it was a piano place for yeah. tuning and repair and if we go back far enough, Bill, was it a gas station? I don't know. Yeah. It, was. it was a police station. Police, police station. station when I first came to yeah. town was a police station. After that was they, way before my time. After they burnt down, after uh, he burnt down this one, they moved over there. <laughs> So maybe if it works, I think most of us kind of kept track of what we kind of want to look at for changing. I don't know if that's how the process goes going forward, if that's something that then we are able to meet on next time, or at least have a list of things that we like to see changed and then develop it from there. Is that kind of how it's been done in the past? I think well, I think if like you great. tell us what you want changed, if we need to go in through it line item or line item or what areas you want changed, if everybody mm -hmm. has spoken. And I've only, I've only really noticed D, 16, and 18. Um, I think you let us know what you want that change to. We would draft that amendment for you to consider. And then based on the language change, you know. So I'd, I'd like to review it again in more detail then. If that's, if that's, if we're gonna really do line item, line item changes, I'd, I'd, I'd like another. Sure. If that, yeah. if that works for There's no rush to this. Yeah. This yeah. Was, I mean, Tark and I didn't even know if we should have a meeting, and then we both kind of said, well, maybe we should meet, maybe give up our December meeting and meet now, and maybe try to hack some of these things out since we don't have a full docket of other yeah. zoning things. But yeah, if you want another meeting um, to, to okay. put in actual numbers or figures, absolutely. And that's where you were going, right, Jacob? That was kind of your plan? Yeah, I just wanted to see from the board too, I guess, and just to make note, if you did have some suggestions that we still can make the on the list now, and then we can review it again at the next meeting. My only two that I had was for uh, the store, which is on the retail store. What page? On, so on our on uh, City of Painsville on twelve, and then item thirteen and fifteen. So 13 being a retail store, which we just recently talked about mm -hmm. for tractor supply. Uh, and then reviewing from the other communities, it seemed like the Sox Center ordinance was closest to the variance that they applied for. Granted that they're using some of their parking as uh, storage for their items that they have. Um, I guess I thought that one was interesting because that was, uh, for Sox Centers was on page 25 and that was uh, five spaces for every 1,000 square feet under 10,000 total, and three per 1,000 over over 10,000 total. You're saying also 15, or did I mishear you? Yeah, 13. 15 also. Yeah, 15, uh, the restaurant. Uh, it looks like the paint city of Painsles is by square feet, and the rest of them were all by number of seating. Have available. Uh, granted, that might be difficult for a new construction of a new restaurant. Know how many exact seats they'll have, but most of them were th one space for three seats, and it looked like many of them were the same from the other communities for what the variance that they applied for. Okay. I guess reviewing those two maybe would be a 
what I would suggest, and maybe we can go down the line if anyone else has any suggestions at the moment. Otherwise, we'll defer to the next meeting. Josh, did you have any? Oh, no, not really. Okay. Billy, you want to be for? Yeah, I would love to. I, I, I made notes on your suggestions. I'd like to sit down uh, and uh, kind of go through this a little bit more depth and then come with uh, more specific line item notes than I currently have jotted with my Sharpie. Paul? Um, I don't have anything as far as the listing right here, but one thing that I do uh, want to mention is that we had gone through on the council um, ordinances uh, requalifying it not long ago, wasn't it, Jennifer? And I remember one thing that, that Bill said is that um, why are we having ordinances that we got to have to keep uh, uh, going through variances? So I think we should go ahead and narrow this on down so we don't have to keep repeating this. I, I agree with the idea that you know the goal of ordinances is to try to avoid having to do variances all the yeah. time. Um, but you know, as Jennifer pointed out, she's been around here for probably 20 years, and there's only been a couple on this. But I, I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I mean, we could, you know, we could be more liberal in in, in, in terms of lesser requirements on on some of these, and that wouldn't it wouldn't bother me. I just, but I just think there's some benefit to having some requirements for parking. Otherwise, I, I feel like I, I know our mayor disagrees, but I, I just feel like if you don't have anything, then you're gonna you're gonna have too much problems. Neighbors complaining, and it, it just seems like it's yep. a, an idea. To, agreed. I tend to agree with Bill. I, I cautious you on this, and I hope this doesn't happen. But I'm already having small nightmares on it. But if the brewery is is as successful as the word on the street is, there could be we could be hearing some complaints from that Flanders Drive. Um, residents down there because I believe if it's a busy place they're going to be parking everywhere you know Mr. Stevens and I know Flagpole has opened up their property but how much property can you acquire or use in the six months of winter that we have the you know the freeze and thaw the ruts the snow so I, I just yeah. like I said I if you take it out it's one less thing for me to enforce but I just I think we have to protect the other neighbors also. Uh, it, and and I, I agree, and, I, and I, I understand completely what you're saying. The, the flip side of that, to play the advocate on that, is the concept that public parking is public parking. And I, and I know people get real protective of the front of their house, but the reality is, is you know, you can come and park in front of my house, and that's, that is how that works. So, you know, there, there's, there's, there's nuisance, and then there's, you know, annoyance, and, and you got to kind of yeah, right. and you know, the tractor supply store, we haven't gone through any holidays yet, so that's gonna, that might depend on how that parking lot fills or doesn't fill, and if they can use deals without any issue or Deepman um, drive there, you know, if it causes any ruckus. Um, but the brewery is in a bowl, it's down there. Mm -hmm. it, there is no public parking down there except that up, up the road and on business, or excuse me, Highway 55. I don't know how MnDOT's gonna look at that. Um, so those are, that's kind of an odd the thing about the brewery is they knew the shape of that lot before they bought it. They knew the size of the building they wanted before they bought it. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm all for business, but you can't overbuild your lot either. Yeah. And, I, and I took that kind of circles back to how Paul started this, which is, you know, at some point, if I want to eat someplace and I pull in and there's no place to park, I tend to find a different place to eat. Yeah. So, I, I, so that too. Just, yeah. Yep. It's not like the funeral. A funeral you kind of got to go through. <laughs> so, so you know, there's a little bit different. That's a really good example, though. Our funeral home here on business. You've stated degree, that. There is no parking there. I mean, what is there? 15 cars there we can put there nicely or 22? People don't have visitations at that funeral home anymore. They have them at the church. It was a prime example of this weekend because there is no parking and then it becomes around the curve it's dangerous you got people parking on both sides and they're trying to make the curve and it, it's it's not great and like bill said there's public parking however there's some safety involved yeah well, and, and i think that, that can be addressed too i mean there are spots on that curve where it still kind of amazes me that we don't have no parking signs but I mean, there there's some there's some room for to address things in that respect to it. 
I've been to beat a dead horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so if we just leave it as is, this will be a packet to work from, like your working papers. You'll still get, you know, a new agenda at the next meeting, but I won't probably put all these papers back in. I'll just say, you know, review the papers that you got at the last meeting. Or save a tree for the city. Yep, save a tree for you guys. <laughs> Okay. Then the second thing is um, signs, hmm. um, and it's pretty much the same thing. I, I researched the same cities, tried to get some um, cities that were close in proximity, um, and also not too crazy in size. Um, so I just researched the same cities. And like I said, um, you know, the ordinance is not perfect by any means. And our ordinance is, is a little bit longer than it used to be, and part of that is because I think we had done things in a more general way, but Jennifer found that it was, people had to search back and forth through parts of the ordinance to find what applied. Okay. And so we, it's, our ordinance gets a little bit repetitive because we put everything that was needed for signs in a commercial district in one place rather than just having general provisions. We, and then, so some of that stuff gets repeated okay. in commercial and industrial and residential and, it, but but that was on that was on purpose after the first effort because yeah. people got frustrated because well I'm in R1 I should be able to find everything about R1 in one place and so we went back and kind of we tried to do that um, and so it's made it longer than it was but I guess hopefully a little bit more user friendly definitely um, better than the first go around and it's, and, and, and me including I want to make sure I check all the boxes when people come and ask about a sign. And if I have to look through all 30 pages, that is taxing. But if I can just go to the district in which the sign is going to be placed and find all the regulations, it's easier on the business owner, it's easier on an engineer, an architect, and internal staff. And the planning board for that matter. In my input, not to repeat myself, we kind of got started before the meeting, but um, I struggle mostly with the concept that there's no designation between sign and a sign and signage I really think I hope that coming out of this we can create some kind of a, of a division that separates um, freestanding signs which I think this you know judging from the fact that I don't see problems I think this ordinance addresses freestanding signs quite well um, I, I struggle with the signage with uh, in, uh, specifically business owners not being able to put up um, a sign on the side of their building or pay, or even paint something I'm, I you don't this is before your time Jennifer but there used to be a big sign that said carpeting do you remember that bill on the side of, uh, of uh, this here this is where, where Papa's Pizza used to yeah, be in the back yeah. so it used to say carpet or carpeting uh, carpet maybe in great big letters yeah, and, and it wasn't the classiest looking thing but yeah. you know that concept that of being able to put up signage, um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, Koopman just put up this uh, the large red circular adhesive sticker in his window, and uh, I'm quite confident it it it, it runs a foul of the. There's one in here about not putting anything on windows to block visual light or air or something. It's like you know, it's his business, it's his window. You know, if he wants to put an eight foot circle of red in his window, he should be able to. So. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. I don't really even have any great ideas for tonight. But that would be something that I would like to come back to maybe at the next meeting with. Maybe I come up with something that separates signage from signs. So you're talking about like the structure, the infrastructure of the sign, as opposed to because with that, I mean, all we're really worried about is that it it has you know that it's physically it has physical integrity. It's not going to tip over. Yeah and that the electrical meets the code. Th those are really about the only things we say about the structures. And that um, they meet the setbacks that are yeah. online. Yeah, it, but it, it's setbacks and it's size, and I think those things address it pretty well. So I, I like, as an example, my property, Cross the Railroad Tracks, had the sign, had the freestanding sign, um, and so it was kind of grandfathered in. I just changed the verbiage on it. But the reality is, is for, a business such as myself to want to put up a freestanding sign that then I think a lot of this is is pertinent the setbacks the size requirements but then if you remember and it's no longer there because we changed our, our business plan but I also had automotive repair 
in signage attached to the building for five or six years. And um, probably, I mean, I don't know what, I don't know how that whole square footage works. Is it square footage based on lot size or? Just per lot. Per lot. So, so if you have more than one lot, you have, yeah, you know. Okay. So um, hmm. for instance, like when McDonald's, Quick Trip, uh, the credit union, those are all brand new signs, monument and pylon. We, the thing we have to worry about is the real tall ones like Quick Trip and McDonald's. We also have a, you know, an airspace there. Yep. They have to meet all the FAA, you know, restrictions. Mm. One thing I would like to see in this ordinance is that if you're going to affix signage to the building or the main business, they don't need a permit yeah. because we've already permitted the building. Um, I think there's some. I think there is some ability in making sure that it's not causing, um, it's, um, you know, a ruckus in the lighting of it or. You know, it's not going to reflect um, traffic signals or things like that. But when the tractor supply puts theirs up, I don't see a problem with that. The little <coughs> are on the west side of Teal's. Um, when you replace the cabinetry on the Teal's sign and you put a, you know, when H&R Block went in there, you know, that sign has already been permitted. They're just putting a new, you know, a face um, with lights behind it. I, those I don't have a problem with. Um, so if we're going to... You know, I have a recommendation. The signs on the buildings. I don't want to have the permit. Signage. As long as if we if we have to have a um, square footage allowance, that, that that is encompassed in that. But if we get rid of the square footage allowance or we increase it, I'm not. I don't have a problem with that. I would have a problem if we had a business that just plastered, you know, every inch of their treasure. You know, treasure city. I, I think that would be. I don't think any of us would probably yeah. Yeah. think that was. Yeah. Attractive. So, so do you think so? Currently, it's based on lot size, not building size. No, it's based on per lot, just per lot. Just and per if lot. If you had a ten thousand square foot lot or twenty thousand square foot lot, it's in commercial, <clears throat> like for tractor supply. C two is four hundred square feet. Four hundred square feet per lot. Well, normally, when it comes to signage, signage, signage is the plural where the sign is just a single one. So maybe I'm misusing the terms. I, when I call, when I say signage, I mean something like like what the city hall here did on their window, where they put up the, 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 they put up the you know, insurance, what does that ever say? I took a picture. So, you know, that's signage to me. So I have an example of, of, of the Methodist Church. Right on the sidewalk, they have the Methodist Church, but they also have a, one that's eliminated at night. Okay, so they have two signs, which, um, is their signage, but they have a singular uh, one sign for each. So, so what, what, what term should I use? What, what would it be? So, oh. if, you're, if you're talking um, signage, it's how many you have on your lot. Okay. So, you, you could have, have like four of them, and that's your signage. Okay. But if you have one sign, then that's just a, signage is actually plural for many signs. Okay, thank you for the correction. No, no so problem. What do I call that? What, how do you differentiate it? Do you so just you, have you're describing it as freestanding versus attached to a window or a building? Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are, are, are concepts, I guess, that, yeah, I mean, we have, uh, some people have freestanding signs and other people have signs but that are that are on their buildings. I mean, downtown, there's a lot of signs that are on buildings or on, you know, like you can look out the window there and you can yeah. see on Centric Care, I guess that's, uh, yeah. So. Okay. Let me, thank you for the correction. Yeah, no problem. I, I, will, I will come back next week with some, something. I don't know, next month, whenever we meet again. <laughs> One other thing I want to bring up that you'll notice as you read is our electronic signage for our churches in our residential districts. Mm -hmm. So both the Lutheran Church and the Methodist Church receive conditional uses for that um, because, you know, they can become problematic because of their close proximity to a residence. If they're blinking and flashing in somebody's bedroom or living room, that could be obnoxious. So we do have a little clause in there, you know, it's called the neighbor, the neighborly friendly thing is they, they're shut off at 10 o'clock at night. Yep, you know, and that's and enforceable, right? It, it is. Okay. If people have brought it up that maybe we need to, you know, send them a letter or remind them that they need to be shut off at 10 and they're, I, don't, I think the earliest thing can be honest that. And I've done that before too. Because yeah. do, they, do they turn on too early or stay on too late? Too late. Okay, well maybe it needs to be addressed based on dusk. Instead of instead of based on a time frame, because 
10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the summer is a lot different than 9 o'clock in the winter. Yeah, that's true. True, yeah. Yeah, and, and so so that's a great, you know, maybe it needs to be changed to that. It, maybe but it could be an hour after sunset. Or two after yeah. dusk or yeah. something. But yeah. yeah. Right in you know, and, and Paul lives in very close proximity to that, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, that's what they used to do is I used to keep my daughter awake at night because of the mm -hmm. flashing lights. And she'd want to know what's going on, and then she'd ask me, "What does it say?" It's like, ah, I'm not going to deal with this. this is no, I didn't okay. sign, so. Fair enough. I mean, it was no big deal. But you'll you'll notice that those types of signs um, for the churches both had to get a conditional use. Yeah. And it was for that matter to make sure that you know they were the, the message was staying on the sign long enough, six, seven seconds or, or more. Um, you know, they're uh, they're not in they're not engaged in any traffic signal type stuff, and then of course the the courtesy to the neighbors. Yeah. Tell you what, on the corner where I live at, when it gets dark out in the winter time and it's snowing, and people are reading that sign, they don't realize that they got to negotiate that curve. And we actually washed out the window a few times with people. Whoops! <laughs> so it's just to the point where it's not going to disrupt traffic. One last question, Jennifer. The, the new billboard that went up next to the dentist office. Now I look at that as a good example of what this ordinance can do it did that did, and so i'm asking i'm not telling i'm asking did is that did did that placement and size and blah 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 was that driven by this ordinance pretty much um that sign had to follow the rules and regulations of this ordinance okay. so the ordinance was already in place but we do have a section on what we would call um billboards or off-site signage yeah i saw so the one pole and yeah 40 by 10 and, and then there's there's a footage between the next billboard the next billboard can be within so okay. many feet so because we don't want to end up like i'll just use like wall drug they have billboard after billboard after billboard we don't want our 55 and our 23 to end up like that because we too have we have two major corridors in our city um but they did go through the conditional use process for that billboard yeah and i thought that was a good example i think it looks nice that uh, was our first billboard or yeah. my first billboard other than so. other than Zaps. And that is in actually the, the highway right away. So that's really not ours. The highway department takes care of that. The state. So we don't even, we don't have any jurisdiction over that. And that lot you're talking about is really a strange lot. Yeah, it was just one little square spot that somebody else but they're owns. But they're putting up, a, uh, they just put up a sign. They're putting up a, so uh, the, putting in a storage facility. Yeah, so the lot that's right next to the former 7-Eleven or whatever it was called, um, which is the dentist now, that lot has been sold, but was, was purchased by the sign company. Uh -huh. And now they um, have sold it to somebody else, and they are proposing to put a storage facility on there for RVs. Cool. It's not a very big lot. It's got an odd shape to it. Um, but there is some need for those types of facilities with our close proximity to the trails and the lakes. Any other suggestions on the sign ordinance to bring forward? All right. Well, I made their made their point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back next month with some more specific specifics. Though. Okay. Uh, then informational. We've got building permit reports. Um. So August is probably one of our slowest months um, that we have, and that's just typical. That August is one of our slowest months, <clears throat> besides some of our winter months. Um, people are trying to get their last vacations in. People are trying to get kids off to school. Um, but if you will notice um, on page 75 of your agenda, you'll see we have nine new homes. So um, that is um, exciting. And um, those lots are busy out there. We do have um, an uptick right now in people that want to do some fences and some uh, just small like garden sheds, roofing. I think we're still getting some people that are at that bubble over here after the storms that have gone through where the insurance is saying, got to get this fixed, your year is winding down, and the contractors have finally put them on the schedule. So we've had to do a fair amount of those also. And, and, and Anderson Window is still out at Fleet every day. Someone trying to sell windows. <laughs> and, and their flyers are still in the mailboxes, you know, so, and I know they ran a state fair one. special, so the state That's fair the special, I guess, is still on for people that, they can pay that want to replace <laughs> um, windows. Um, a 
September is a busy month for Brad. He does most of his um, trainings in September. Um, so um, I tend to do a lot of scheduling. So when he's back, he is super busy <laughs> for inspections. Good. All right, next meeting then, October 21st. Bill will bring, do his homework and bring some more oh. items with. So, so will everyone else, hopefully. I would hope everyone else has, does, a, does a little. You already did some. <laughs> Any other discussion then? Okay, we are adjourned. All right. See you all next month.